Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware here with NVIDIA's new GeForce RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti Turing graphics cards. We're going to plug them in, fire them up, show you some new features that they're capable of, and of course, run them through the benchmark gauntlet next. Now, before we dive into the tech demos and benchmark numbers of these two new NVIDIA Turing graphics cards, let's take a quick look again at the physical attributes of NVIDIA's new GeForce RTX 2080 Ti and 2080 versus the previous generation Pascal-based GeForce GTX 1080 Ti here. As you can see, the immediate apparent difference, obviously, are the 2080 series dual 13 blade axial fans. They provide a lot more cooling, move a lot more air across a much larger vapor chamber. And uh, we'll look at that shortly, but as you can see, the cards are about identical length and almost identical thickness as well. Although the RTX card has an entirely machined aluminum fan shroud with a much smaller plastic logo plate on the front and the 2080 Ti versus the 1080 Ti has a pair of 8-pin PCI Express power connectors now versus the 6-pin and 8-pin combination on the 1080 Ti. Now the 2080 series card is identical in terms of its physical design to the 2080 Ti, but again the difference here is 6-pin PCI Express power connector and 8-pin on the 2080 combination and dual 8 pin on the 2080 Ti. Outputs for these new GeForce RTX 2080 series cards here on the right consist of a trio of DisplayPort version 1.4 ports, an HDMI 2.0 B port with HDCP 2.2, and a proprietary Virtual Link USB Type-C port which offers a four-lane HBR3 DisplayPort connection and USB 3.1 Gen 2 over this single connector. And traditional multi-GPU SLI connectors located on the top edge of the cards are now replaced by the new NV-Link connector, which offers significantly more bandwidth. Where SLI essentially acted as a display bridge and offered limited bandwidth, NV-Link is both a memory and display bridge with up to 100 gigabytes of bi-directional bandwidth at its disposal. Now again, the heat pipe and vapor chamber in the GeForce RTX 20 series cards extends the entire length of the card offering 2x the cooling area of the previous generation Pascal series cards. So theoretically it should run a lot cooler and a lot quieter and Nvidia has really re-architected the entire design of the Founder Edition cards. And really what is an excellent well-made graphics card feels significantly more solid than the previous generation GTX but really well made, all machined aluminum and again that cooling system appears to be much improved. We'll take a look at how it performs shortly. So let's prove that out. Here's the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti benchmarking a little bit of Ghost Recon Wildlands. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the DB meter. As you can see, it's pushing about 50 DB when I am not speaking. And taking a look at thermals here, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Pascal GPU is operating at about 83 degrees C in this benchmark. Meanwhile, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti is running at about 72 degrees Celsius. And in terms of acoustics, when I am not speaking, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti drops in at about 47 dB, so it's definitely a lot cooler and a little bit quieter. Next, let's look at a couple of demos of new technologies that are available now with NVIDIA's Turing GPUs and the GeForce GTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. Turing now supports something called mesh shading that NVIDIA claims can improve performance and image quality by an order of magnitude when rendering a large number of objects in a game scene. Turing's new graphics pipeline introduces a technique called variable rate shading with dynamic level of detail or LOD, essentially shading or detailing triangles more where needed and less where it's not needed. Traditionally, LOD management can become a bottleneck because it's handled by the CPU and is resource intensive. However, because Turing now introduces 
task shaders for calculating LOD and object culling for objects in a scene that are less visible and require less shading detail, these functions are now entirely offloaded from the CPU and are managed by the GPU. Here in NVIDIA's Asteroids demo, we're starting off with a low level of detail in the asteroid belt that the ship is flying through. However, as we increase the LOD or level of detail in the asteroid objects in the scene, frame rates begin to plummet down to as low as 6 frames per second at the highest detail setting. Note the frame counter in the lower left corner of the screen. But when we turn on dynamic LOD mode, as you can see, we actually keep the same or even slightly better level of detail in the asteroids while maintaining acceptable frame rates at high resolution. Again, dynamic LOD off and now on now off again and dynamic LOD back on. This is a feature of NVIDIA Turing that game developers have to employ in next generation game engines but as you can see the results are dramatic and this does not employ traditional tessellation techniques at all in this demo. DLSS or Deep Learning Supersampling is one of the more interesting and talked about features of NVIDIA's new Turing architecture and GeForce RTX cards. DLSS employs Turing's tensor cores to perform a machine learning image quality enhancement and it actually has a lot more merit than just the latest trend of using AI as a buzzword. Game developers will need to adopt this technology as well but essentially NVIDIA will take games and game engines and optimize them for free in one of its DGX1 supercomputers comparing frame by frame frame image quality for anti-aliasing versus 64x super sample images as ground truth for image quality. The AI will then fill in the detail with crisp rendering and deliver it as a neural network model for RTX cards to process with on the fly for higher performance as part of GeForce experience in its games library. In this demo we're running an NVIDIA modified version of the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark running at high image quality and 4K resolution. With standard TAA or temporal anti-aliasing on, frame rates hover around 40 frames per second and image quality is excellent. However, when we flip off TAA and turn on DLSS, frame rates scale north of 50 frames per second for about a 35% performance boost overall and equally as good image quality. Finally, there's the Reflections demo, the clip you've probably seen if you've been following NVIDIA's efforts with Turing and real-time ray tracing. Based on Epic's Unreal Engine, this cinematic Star Wars demo employs both real-time ray tracing with Microsoft's DirectX Ray Tracing API, processed on Turing's RT cores, as well as DLSS for even better visuals. The cinematic sequence here showcases realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections, all being dynamically calculated. The GeForce RTX 2080 Ti is able to render this demo at 1440p at 50 to 60 frames per second and 4K at about 30 frames per second. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2080 delivers about 40 to 45 frames per second in the demo at 1440p. And finally, the previous generation GeForce GTX 1080 Ti can in fact run the demo at 1440p but it's a veritable slideshow at 10 frames per second or less, proving that you can in fact run real-time ray tracing on legacy GPU hardware prior to GeForce RTX. However, you'd likely not be too happy with it. All right then, let's get down to some benchmark numbers, shall we? First, a synthetic DX12 favorite 3DMark Time Spy. The GeForce RTX 2080 drops in slightly ahead of a Titan XP, if you can believe that by about 6 to 7 percent and the RTX 2080 Ti crushes everything by 30 to 35 percent depending on whether you look at the total 3D Mark score or the graphics score. Moving on to an action gaming fan favorite Rise of the Tomb Raider at its highest image quality preset and 1440p resolution we see the GeForce RTX 2080 slot in slightly behind a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti for average frame rate but with much higher minimum frame rate. The GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, however, once again takes the top spot, slipping past the Titan XP by 14%, but again with dramatically higher minimum frame rate. At 4K, we see more of the same, except the minimum frame rate variances have leveled off. The RTX 2080 is right up alongside the GTX 1080 Ti's performance, and the RTX 2080 Ti posts a 25% lead over the 
1080 Ti this time. Moving on to Middle Earth Shadow of War, a popular DX11 based game title at 1440p, we see more of the same. The RTX 2080 just edges out the Titan XP while the RTX 2080 Ti aces the top Pascal based score by over 22%. At 4K, the gaps widen even further with the RTX 2080 Ti pulling away from the Titan XP Pascal-based card by over 30% and over 38% faster than a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Taking things up a notch to the very taxing, almost piggish Ghost Recon Wildlands at 1440p with ultra image quality settings, the RTX 2080 is slightly faster than a 1080 Ti previous generation Pascal card and the 2080 Ti is once again on top and roughly 20% faster than the GTX 1080 Ti. Min frame rates in this game are all over the map so take those with a grain of salt. At 4K however those mins level off and even the mighty RTX 2080 Ti can't hit 60 frames per second, though it's significantly faster than any other card in this group. And finally, finishing things off with something a bit more optimized with cutting edge DirectX 12 graphics, Far Cry 5 at 1440p with the Ultra preset shows a similar grouping yet again but with much higher frame rates overall. The RTX 2080 sneaks past the GTX 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080 Ti edges past the Titan XP along with a 17% lead over the GTX 1080 Ti. At 4K resolution, the delta is spread out even more for the RTX 2080 Ti with a 24% lead over the Titan XP and a 31% lead over the 1080 Ti. Meanwhile, the RTX 2080 is right in the mix, slightly faster than a 1080 Ti and a touch behind a Titan XP. So that wraps up our quick features and performance review of NVIDIA's new GeForce RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti. In a nutshell, in current generation games, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti is dramatically faster than any other gaming graphics card on the market right now, on the order of 25 to as much as 35%, and the RTX 2080 drops in about as fast as a 1080 Ti with sometimes the ability to hang with a Titan XP. That said, at $1199 for the RTX 2080 Ti and $799 for the RTX 2080 for these Founders Edition cards, Turing is obviously pricey new technology from Nvidia. And it stands to reason, Turing is a beast of a GPU and it comes with a significantly larger die size as well as faster GDDR6 memory and a much improved cooler for the Founders Edition cards. Also reportedly, non-Founders Edition cards will drop in at lower price points, but we've yet to see these materialize at retail. Time will tell, but we also need to remember Turing's forward-looking features like AI-assisted DLSS image quality enhancements and real-time ray tracing for next-generation game engines with dramatically better performance as well. So with any luck, hopefully Turing is just getting warmed up, but make sure you hit the feature card above here and stop by hothardware.com for our full review and also a closer look at Nvidia's new OC scanner tool for one-click Turing overclocking, as well as a ton of more performance data. Hit the thumbs up if you like this review and subscribe for more coverage in the days ahead as well. I'm Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware with Nvidia's new GeForce RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti Turing graphics cards. Thanks for stopping by.